welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever been confused by the world around you, then do we have the, wait for it, <laughs> chocolate smoothie show for you. What? Today we'll talk about getting grounded, eating chocolate, and finding your chocolates in life, no matter how loopy things get. That plus we'll talk about Rue and Barry White. <laughs> Baby registries and crazy mailmen, postal wormholes, indoor trainers and a humbling, format changes gone right, whaling around, Dell coaching, hiring, hiring, and more hiring, four moves in five months, a Rue Tramp Olympics, a Rue Takeout Window, a Rue Spa Day, and what on earth is a Rue Bikini Wax, according to Jessica, not me, and the one the world mansplaining gone wrong has to do with anything. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. <laughs> Where do you want to start oh with my this? My goodness. I, 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 okay. I don't, there's so many things about Rue. Let's cover all the Rue stuff. It sounds like there's a bunch of Rue stuff. Well, we had to go down for our um, latest uh, hospital visit down in Philadelphia for the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia to find out um, how baby Hannah's heart is doing. We are now in the third trimester. And on the way down there, he had locked his schnitzel in the car and he just wasn't calming down. There's rush hour traffic everywhere and he's sensitive to energy. And we found <laughs> inexplicably that the only music that would calm him down was Barry White. <laughs> Which song? Like... All of them, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and we've had Barry White for the better part of a week, and we, we love you in heaven, Barry, but I can't handle another Barry White song. Hilarious. <laughs> so done. But we were just cracking up. He'd be screaming, and Barry White would come on, and he would just be, oh. <laughs> 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 he just calm right down. And, and it was good, because we were very nervous. We were on pins and needles, and he was... Once he got into his Barry, Barry White mode, he was nice and calm. Nice. That is hilarious. Okay, what else? There's a bunch of other stuff with Rue. So, Rue so, Bikini Wax. Um, uh, <laughs> Rue Trampolympics. Tramp 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 okay. uh, so um, right now it's it's been too icy and snowy and cold to take him on the trails, and he likes his drive to the trails each morning. And so I found... I had done it last year in California briefly, but hadn't really played with it much. I could hold him on the rebounder and bounce up and down. <laughs> he gets nice and calm. And yesterday was a record two and a half plus hours of him on the rebounder. Wait, you were bouncing for two and a half hours? I ended up having a meeting with Jessica and we did it while I'm holding him. And then Jessica wanted to watch the, the uh, big air finals of the Olympics. And so we, I just stood on the trampoline. Are you like, how, how high are you jumping on the uh, my rebounder? Feet, with him on there, my feet don't leave the trampoline. So there's... Oh, so it's a, just a, kind of like a this kind of thing. It's a bouncing. It's, it's like a good steady jog. Yeah. So um, I haven't mastered the getting air with him on the trampoline. <laughs> He's growing more and more comfortable. Like this morning, he wanted a little bit more height, and he lets me know. But we haven't gone quite to the uh, air yet. Okay, got it. So you got root, and then root. Then, then the other thing. The, taking out windows, a oh, root spa we, day, and a root bikini wax. So we have the house set up so that we have little barricades for the kitchen. So the kitchen is Jessica's sacred zone. But he will come up right to the edge of this little, like, foot high, clear bar barricade. And he'll stand there and wait for Jessica to give him some citrus or, like, some oranges or some grapefruit. He just. Got his eye on her, and he hangs out at the takeout window. Now. Oh, God, that's hilarious. So he just hangs out there. Yeah, and then the other one is a Rue Spa Day, which is um, his, uh, because he doesn't have outdoor time in the winter, his beak has been getting quite long. His beak grows like nails. And if your beak gets too long then and you peck at things, you can actually get a crack in your beak. Oh. And, and those can be painful or dangerous. So... We've been trying to figure out how to trim his beak, and we got in a, a a nail grinder device. It's like a Dremel tool with a safety on it, and played with that, and it came with some sharp clippers, and we found he's getting more and more comfortable with Jessica clipping his beak like she clips his nails. So like a couple of days ago, and then again this morning, she's clipping his beak, she's clipping his nails, she decides to trim some feathers around the tail end. He's getting the full spa day <laughs> treatment. 
And that's what she's calling the Rue Bikini Wax, is getting the tail end nice and cleaned up there. <laughs> and he's loving it. Okay, so tell me about baby Hannah and what's happening with that. Or can you share with us what you know so far? Uh, the latest in simplest terms is um, because her heart had to pump for two, it has still not gone back to normal yet. There's a very simple procedure that gets to be done after she's born, either right away or a few days later. So we get to, we had just moved up here to Lake Patcong in uh, northern New Jersey, and we get to move now down to Philly um, for um, delivery of the baby and then move back here. And then this is only through the end of June. And then, so it's four moves we get to do in five months. We can double back to that, but uh, baby Hannah will be great. Um, it does mean... Um, some logistics and that she will be in a NICU for a, four a few days to a couple weeks. And so when we first deliver, Jessica won't come home. My guess is from the hospital, home being some rental place in Philly, uh, but we'll probably be staying in a couch or uh, a chair for as long as it takes until baby Hannah comes home. Yeah, to so. just keep her, get, give her, keep attachment and yeah and do all that good so thing. she won't have a hospital room after a couple of days but she'll just hang with baby hana and the NICU is, is how do they do that for the NICU unit how do they how do they do that because the baby in the past they would the babies would be in like a little plastic that's an incubator that's only if you're born free me oh okay so, got it. so she can well, actually hold her and touch her the whole time the whole time oh good okay good Oh, that's so, um, so we will we will navigate. So, why am I calling this the the, the chocolate smoothie show? Is everything's just so ridiculous right now? <laughs> Here, have a chocolate smoothie. Thank you. It's just for everybody. It's ridiculous it right now. Ridiculous. I know that. It's just there is no logicing this. It's just. Have you seen the movie with Chevy Chase? It's it's from decades ago. Funny Farm. He's, he's an author, or he becomes an author. He leaves his day job. They move uh, up to, uh, like, northern New York State. They have a crazy mailman who either tries to mow them down or throws the, the mail out the window, just won't deliver. This is the craziness. Well, we started a baby registry a couple weeks ago, and, and the response has been so beautiful. Thank you if you've, if you've uh, bought something from the baby registry. It's been awesome. And... Uh, Jessica has handwritten notes to everybody personally and put a roof feather in uh, everybody but the first round. She hadn't thought of it for the first round. No, not not big feathers. He, he, he has his, oh, these, <laughs> his, these little ones. In fact, it's just we like just Ruth started... is bald right now because no. of all these thank you notes. <laughs> we just we just started a new show on YouTube called uh, that Jessica started called uh, Rubits. And this would be a Rubit. It's little feathers. But um our mailbox is on a corner. At the corner, in the winter, cars slide out and hit the mailbox. Mm -hmm. So the mailbox is dented, and it turns out doesn't have a red flag on it. Oh. So we figure a mail person will be smart enough to understand if you put it at the front with stamps on it to pick it up. No. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> we put all the thank yous notes in. Mail person didn't pick it up. So Jessica took a little wooden hammer, wrapped red cloth around it, duct taped it to the mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> and they won't even stop by now. It's the crazy mailman rural is like trying to teach us a lesson. Well, no, it's they like won't even. Like the movie The Funny Farm. It's and and it's craziness. And then <laughs> like she ordered stamps to do more thank you notes, and she watched tracking the stamps. Stamps have made it to Kansas City. Stamps have left Kansas City. Stamps have made it to Kansas City. Oh stamps have left. God. It's in a word. So we're in these multiple mailbox wormholes <laughs> they won't give us oh, stamps they won't pick up our mail that is so, so weird it's funny it's ridiculous though because the mailbox is stuffed with thank you notes with thank you notes all stamped with a giant thing a flag like thing sticking out and they won't even stop by <laughs> you're gonna be what so when are you moving because the four homes when are you moving to philly then when so you have a place in philly now or what's your story yeah no um, we have, we have a place that we went down and checked out the outside of it and don't feel great about it. Um, we may, mm, universe might say that's where you're staying anyway. We are open. We haven't found anything else yet. Yeah. Um, 
and it will be approximately, my guess is April 29th, maybe we can move in May 1st. The uh, due date is uh, originally for Singleton was May 28th because of the twin procedure we had done. They said it's probably more like May 7th that this baby will be born much earlier than as if, if she was a singleton. So assuming we move in the 29th to the 1st and she's born, let's say, on the 7th, um, maybe we only have to be there a couple weeks. I don't know. But the baby's in the NICU for how long? For two? two it weeks? totally depends on do they do the procedure right away? Do they wait a couple days ah, to do the procedure? Okay, how quick does her body respond to the procedure? Right, okay. This is chocolate smoothie means God's hands. It what, what ain't is in chocolate our hands. Smoothie thing? We, she's been ordering these, these uh, from this um, online food service called Daily Harvest. Oh, yeah, I've had, okay, got it. They have all these different packs that you put in and yeah. create them. Yes. Yeah, and most of it we, we haven't really enjoyed, but the chocolate smoothies, she's loving the chocolate. And so the chocolate smoothie is just a metaphor for life. <laughs> this just send me five hundred chocolate smoothies now. I think that's what the freezer looks like right now. It is just. I think the last box was all chocolate smoothies. If you have a pregnant person, that's the smart, the smartest, most rational thing to do. Is whatever she. I guess it was chocolate smoothies, and she tried out the flatbreads this time. So she will. Oh, nice. She will do more flatbreads next time. So. Um, none of this is in our control. Then after we come back from Philly. We get to move by the end of June. And the big question is, where? Now, there are determining factors. We've decided we really want to move to New Hampshire. That feels really good to yeah, us. Yeah, that's what I thought. However, what continuing care will Hana need? Do we need to stay near this hospital? Anyway. Or is it OK if we shift and go to a Boston hospital? Yeah, yeah. Can we get an insurance for New Hampshire that will cover the Boston hospital? How do we want to do the continuing care? How exhausted is she after whatever medical procedures there are? And do we need to stay close to Jessica's family just for a little bit for her to recover? But then we're not going to rent a place for a month. Chocolate smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> Code word, CJ. And I have to tell you, like, once a baby is born, I don't know. I think having parents around to help, like, I haven't slept I'm my shirt's inside out. Um, <laughs> I don't well, know where that's, I am. That's where we're at. Our, our <laughs> <laughs> That is completely with, with this one. I mean, because we've had medical procedures, we've had all of these emergency things. It is, this is not going like normal. It's baby Hannah's doing great. And, and she's got quite the kick on her so far. All but one ultrasound, they have said, most active baby they've seen, which, yes. That totally I, makes I'm sense. Very proud what are you of this. expecting? <laughs> So her belly now, you just see the foot go <laughs> across the whole wow. belly. Wow. Wow. I'm surprised she's just not doing push-ups in there and, like, you know, <laughs> moving her legs. Around. Probably is. <laughs> On the exercise cycle. Exactly. Wow. So wow. We, so exciting, you, Michael. We, we will – we are letting go on a whole new level, and um, it just is. It yeah. just is, but it is, it is exciting. Um, I am doing everything in my power to build up my team now so that I can step back and things are not, well, I love them on cruise control, but a cruise control at a higher level. Um, and so we're really working on putting that team in place now. And we've got, we've talked about for years, making format changes on the show. We have successfully implemented some. So now I have a shorter show two days a week on video. Well, now on podcast too, which has been really, really fun with me on air. And there's a lot of goodness coming. It is just, well, it's interesting. I looked at my watch today and it tells me how my nervous system is doing. And it says it's actually incredibly well that I am like off the charts relaxed compared to the general population. I'm just, there's nothing left on the desktop. <laughs> I am relaxed, but nobody home. <laughs> <laughs> how, could, how, does it, how does it measure there's nobody home? And well, it doesn't. The watch, what the watch will show me, what, what the watch will show me is for one thing, it, t it tells me I'm, I'm not allowed to uh, do a workout for, right now it says four days. <laughs> it says you're so full, no workouts for at least the next four days. But you're it relaxed. Says, 
but in, I but am relaxed, but it's 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 saying you need more sleep, you need more this, you need more that. But it's telling me on my heart coherence or what's called your uh, heart variability um, that I am extremely your range is from zero to a hundred, a hundred being they're gonna you know, lock you up for anxiety condition, zero being you're uh, sleeping. Um, and my average right now is like 11 or something. It wow. is really cool. But now my team is going, so why don't you act that way? Because I am overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, still... I don't think I've ever, you know, I've never seen someone go through such a long stress of being, a uh, stretch of being in the unknown. I mean, it's been a really long time because you left Colorado when? Left Colorado a year and a half with the a year so and a half ago with the a fires. Year and a half, a year and a half, been kind of like in this flow state. I, I, I don't. I mean, from my perspective, when I when, you know, I've actually sometimes I, I went through and I was like loading up one of the shows, and I thought, and I was looking at the titles to figure out what title to give this show. You know, and, and whatever. And, and, and I told Jesse, I'm like, we can't call this going into the unknown or surrender again because CJ says. Every single show right now. I told her that this morning. <laughs> so she said, call it chocolate smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like every single thing. I'm like, yeah, I think, I mean, this is the theme of you. And it's actually, oddly, the theme of my life, too. But I'm going through a much, like, more gentle wa wave of this than um, you are. But it's, it is really just going to, like, I don't know. Like, I was listening to a client. And, um, and what I'm finding so interesting is my, my par business partner and I are working on this idea of the theory of the mind, mm -hmm. which is that what I think you're thinking about me, you know, so, and, and that drives. That's called the feedback loop. Feedback loop. Is that what it's called? Well, that's what I call it. Yeah. Because so, you start thinking about the other person is thinking, and, and then you start reacting to that. And it's not even happening on, there's the reaction on the, the, the vocal level. But there's a reaction probably on the pheromone level and stuff, but there's a reaction, yes. In, Subconscious. Absolutely. And energetically, you're feeling things. So Jessica and I, we will spiral on occasion, and I'll go, but I didn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but you're coded. So I, I actually had one of these, these things with my husband this week where it's like, well, I thought you thought. I, I thought, you know, and, it was, and I was watching this um, Netflix show, I think, or HBO. It's called Kick, Click, Kick. Click, click, boom. And um, I there's I have to find this song. I'll send it to you. But it's like, <coughs> I thought that you thought that when I thought this, that this, and then but, but you thought, and I mean, it's just this whole song about that. And um, my whole coaching has been um, about coaching a group of people. And one person is talking about another person. And they actually are talking about each other. But they don't know that I'm actually coaching, uh, coaching both of them. At least I think. I'm not even sure. And it's so fascinating. It's like, well, this person thought this, and that person thought this, and but like the person's not thinking any of these. Or, you know, they're not thinking any of these things. And so, it really has hit home to me the reality that we create based on our subconscious and how that um, creates discord. There are wounds inside of me, and this is this is perfectly aligned with what you're saying. There are wounds inside of me that I really thought that I had dealt with well. But now wounds tend to come back at a higher level for more clearing, more clearing, and it's not even your clearing at some point, as we've talked about. It's group consciousness clearing, but it will group consciousness will travel through whatever is the deepest groove inside of you to pop up. And I've had a lot of that lately come up to be cleared or dealt with as this has been just a chocolate smoothie of a time. <laughs> and so what I've been coaching Jessica is we'll get into this feedback loop and I'll say feedback. We're just feeding off of each other here is Jessica, what I need you to say to me, I love you. You're doing great. It's all okay. I love you because there is a part of me that's little Michael now that is looking What's she thinking? What's she saying? Why isn't she smiling? Is everything okay? Is she judging me? Because so many things are in play that I'm looking for any security and I am will spot danger where there is none. Right. Like, and she's like, 
I so love she's like, you, you want me? Everything's okay. What is it? I yeah, love you. I love you. You're doing great. Everything is okay. <laughs> and I'm looking for that validation. She's like, you really want me to say that all the time? I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I need. Because if not, my subconscious is going looking for danger. Yeah, that is just so... I, 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 I've had so many coaching clients this week and my own experience where my husband and I, because I have this big class that I'm teaching today, and we're in our now third class, so it's been very exciting um, that we're teaching on, it's a different model on diversity, equity, inclusion, and DEI. And it's about how, um, it's not about um, critical you know, race theory or anything like that. It's more just like we all have defense patterns that are based on our subconscious programming. So we have an assessment that will help you understand those defense patterns and then help you understand the mind or thought behind those so that we can actually start contemplating like, you know, what is little Michael? What is little, little CJ thinking that they're thinking that their husband or wife are thinking where did those come from and are they true? And so you start disassembling those things by using, we actually are using a psych K process, but there's all sorts of different processes that you can use. So it's just been so, I'm really getting that this is like, I think we've hit the gold mine. Like this is really, I'm seeing this in clients and I'm seeing it over and over and over again. And it's about, I, and I literally just got off a call today yeah. Uh, with a client where she was comp she was having conflict with one of her employees, and I said, "Well," and her employees were saying, "You just don't understand things from my lens," and um, I said, "Okay." And so we were talking and we were going through this whole you know one hour's worth of conversation, and we concluded like one has a task task oriented lens and the other one has a relationship oriented lens. And that they 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 are seeing the, their selves for these two lenses, and they can't see that the other's lens and the benefit of those two lenses, or in fact that they can actually merge together. Like one, and in this case, one party doesn't want to merge with the other person because they don't see the value of this lens. And the other person finally, I'm like, oh, they're like, oh, I get the lens now. I don't understand it. I'm like, well. You may not want to understand it, but in terms of diversity, you both have biases on your d different lenses, and how can you bring it together, or how can you value this? And if you can't, um, you know, or how can she value, like, how do you come together so you're both valuing each other's perspective without judgment on each other? And it's just been so interesting, just the different lenses, perspectives that we take and how it divides us. and. And it's, it's just been so interesting because I feel like I woke up two days ago, just two, three, no, now it's four days. And I was like, I'm, I woke up and I was like, I'm disheartened. I, I almost can't get out of bed. <laughs> and this is not very usual for me. And I thought, what is going on? There's like, collective consciousness. I've woken up many a morning recently and go, I'm depressed. I'm like, it's not me. It's situational or something, but I feel really depressed. Okay, well, I'm so glad that I can join, you can join me in that. Because I'm like, I can't even get out of bed. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I, I'm like, what is it? What is, I'm like, oh, no, I know what the word is. Dispirited. <laughs> like, this is my word. I'm dispirited. And then yesterday I woke up and I was like, hopeless. You know, it's like, it's just that. And it's yes. this, this energy of the zeitgeist. And it's so hard because I, I think, what do you have to be dispirited about? You're wanting this class. Things are going well. And it's and I'm like, I have no idea. And then I, and then I think, oh, I see. There's just this energy around me, either through the groups mm -hmm. that I'm coaching. And when you start coaching groups, you just start picking up their energy, right? I mean, whether you like it or not, you're there to, in fact, in some ways, tune into the energy. And then and it's this energy of conflict, right? Because people don't understand each other's perspectives. And then there's the energy of the world where, you know, people don't understand <laughs> each other's perspectives and they've decided to go be at war with each other. And it's just sitting in that what the heck is going on and, and, and being in the unknown. It's like, it's a, it's like the next level of unknown where it's like, well, when is this going to end? I don't know. Why is this happening? I don't know. 
when, what can I do? I don't know. I, I, I like <laughs> I chocolate, smoothie. chocolate smoothie, total chocolate smoothie moment. And I, and I, and the first day I worked myself out and I thought, you know what? The, there's a grand plan that I don't understand and trying to understand in my mi minuscule human brain is impossible. So don't even try. Just have faith that there's a divine plan that you don't understand and just just be at peace and equanimous during this. Even when war, hatred, whatever is the swirling around you, it's like there's a grand plan I don't understand. And then the second day I was like, went through the same thing. <laughs> I was like, but why all the anger and hatred and war? And it's like, it's, you can't prevent that from happening. There, this, the world is going to have these things. You can't prevent these from happening. And until we all raise in consciousness, this is going to continue to happen. And it's like, okay, all right. And then the next day I'm like, I'm just angry. <laughs> <laughs> That's, and it's interesting because anger, I've walked around going, I'm so angry. I just want to, and, and Jessica's like, what are you angry about? And I'm like, I'm not. There's an energy flowing through me that is so tremendous right now. I don't have the words for it. And it's anger. That's, I'm just like, so I'm like talking to myself. I'm like, are you going to do that? And he's like, what's all the anger about? I'm like, well, what are you angry about me being angry for? It's just like a disaster. <laughs> We're plugged into an electrical socket. <laughs> chocolate smoothie. I know, but the thing is, Michael, the thing that I was contemplating is I thought, is this is, is this the life I've chosen? <laughs> is this what's Yes. Is this what's supposed Plain to happen? Plain and simple, I've done a whole bunch of shows on it. Yes. Okay. I, I actually get that we chose to come in here during this time, but this is actually a party. And we're actually elevating in consciousness during this time. And this is an amazing time to be here. But boy, it doesn't feel no, like it, it feels does. it feels awful. It feels awful. And, and then I thought, well, I talked to this woman. And she said, you know, it's about just being in light and love. And like just if you can just tune out this other stuff. I'm like, I, I, am I, I, I don't know why, but I'm not capable of it. And I don't know if I'm like, maybe that's not my mission. Like, I think some people are supposed to tune in and do an alchemy on it. I, I believe I would go with alchemize, which is everything is on the flip side of the same coin. So that's, that's why I don't like to, to label the energy one or the other, because let's, let's say the, 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 you call it uh, anger toward another on the other side of the coin is love toward another. Right. And it is the same coin. And so it's, how can we take in that energy that is, that is, around us that is infused into every cell of our being right now and out to alchemize to me is turn up the light on it and if you turn up the light on it it shifts it shifts from what you thought was anger to love it shifts from what you thought was depression to a state where you can totally move forward you thought was chaos to coherence at a higher level and that's where we're at and that's why it's just energy we are being bombarded with energy right now it's what do we choose to do? But what I wouldn't do, my personal opinion, is stuff the energy under the carpet and just go a different direction because that energy is going to chase you down. You get to snuggle up with the energy. I know, but is there another way where you think, do I have to alchemize this? Or do well, I you just don't, like you radiate don't have love? To go, you don't have to go watch war TV. You do not have to go do that. You can radiate love and bring that love and light to war. This is not making light of it. What this is, is understanding that if we are on one in one giant light bulb, and that light bulb is actually made of 8 billion LEDs, every LED that glows brighter changes the total illumination of the light bulb. So every single one of us, if we put ourselves in the light, makes a difference on the totality of the whole thing. Even if there are some pixels that are, that are shorting each other out, as you grow brighter, it affects the whole thing. Okay, so I think here's my conclusion because I've been thinking about this, and I'd love to hear about your – because it sounds like you've been delving into this too – is so I think that there's some people who are just about, you know, making their light brighter, mm -hmm. right? And then I think there's some people who are about the alchemy. Like they're, they're, they're gifted with a bunch of skills, a bunch of tools to, you know, create – take the suffering and like turn it into something else 
and 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 I guess I'm I I am resting, sort of, and resisting, mostly, <laughs> um, being the person that does the alchemy. And I and I know, I know that when you al you're doing the alchemy, you're changing yourself, you're changing others. But it, it sometimes it's a bit much. That's what I'm feeling. You don't have to consciously do it. Just by bringing more light changes, for some reason I want to say the soup. Yeah. It changes the whole thing without you needing to. So one of, the, one of the things I do when I do healing work with people is while I like them to lean into the energy behind things so we can let it go, I never need to take them back to an actual event and relive the event. I consider that in my work, torture. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't, traumatizing. Yes, I don't want to re-traumatize anyone. Things like the news today are tools of re-traumatization. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm not saying that they're any big bad person who's created, it's just how it is. Mm -hmm. If you focus on the train wreck, you get more train wreck. Yeah. How do we bring either more love and light to the train wreck or just love and light general? Both will do the same thing, which is shift the energy because it is not, it is both life or death real and it's also not real yeah and i agree with that i guess part of what i've been contemplating is my personal mission in all of this right because i think there there's some people who are just bring more love and light there's some people who are supposed to like go in and like oh wow bring more love and light you know to create the alchemy going in and, and understanding and and for me like it, it has literally resulted in me sitting on the cushion actually lying on the floor now and um, my normal pattern is like, whoop, go right out of my head because it's like, oh, I can't deal with this. Goodbye. My energy just leaves and I'm breathing in. I'm feeling the pain. I literally feel physical pain in my body. And I think I've been telling you this. I've been like screaming and like crying. And I, do I have any content? None whatsoever. I'm screaming bloody murder like i actually almost had to text my ne my neighbors going if you hear loud screams i'm not dying unless you hear me scream help <laughs> otherwise <laughs> i'm fine <laughs> so they're like listening to the screams going do you they got the phone in their hand <laughs> exactly what is her husband doing to her and is she safe and you know i mean it's that's it's like blood curdling screams or sobbing or just like shaking in terror and having no no content at all but still feeling that and then actually at the end feeling like filled with love and light so it's just this alchemical process and it's oh gosh it's kind of exhausting <laughs> it's kind of exhausting i don't think there's any one right way yeah. at this time it is what is pulling on your heart that's where you get to play and if that's screaming bloody murder or going and grabbing a punching bag and but 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 it is is as long yes. as your intention and there's nothing wrong even if your intention isn't there it helps if your intention is a healing intention is a bring love and light intention is a making yourself feeling better intention i think that helps but there is no one particular way yeah. to do any of this. Mm -hmm. And my, my guess is you're gonna switch from one mode to another mode and, and you're, you're a fast switcher. You're gonna be switching back and forth, sort of like ACDC. <laughs> Thanks, probably. Well, I mean, what I actually recognized today is I thought, okay, it's actually getting to the point, I've been doing so much of this work, it's actually causing self-harm because I'm just like, I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, you're part of the equation to so you need to give yourself love and give it a break. Like, don't listen to the news. Like, I know you want to be a responsible citizen, but, like, don't listen to the news. Take a break from, like, doing this work and just fill yourself up with light and love and light because it's still filling everyone else up. But focus on you first versus others because my focus has been on others. Uh, myself, I feel the pain and energy. I'm like, oh, it's not mine. So I'm, like, focusing on others and pulling it in. But there's a, a slight ACDC, maybe this is what you're referring to, of switching to just like, okay, I'm just going to be loving to myself right now. That is what is needed the most at this point. So that, I think, is one recognition that I have is that it's just exhausting and I need to give myself a break. Um, and I have, I have to say, share one thing with you, Michael, that's on the really <laughs> happy side. 
So I, we went to Hawaii for my birthday, or I went to Hawaii for my birthday, spent time with my friends. And uh, we were in Turtle Bay. Do you know where that is um, in Maui, where all the yes. turtles swim? So we we're. Um, it's a time where a lot of the whales, the baby whales, go with their mom, and they, like, get Aww. trained up to go, like, go out and swim out. So mostly last week or when I was there, I was paddling out with the paddleboard trying to see the baby whales and seeing them in the far distance, you know, like maybe at the end of a football field kind of distance. But I'd see the little tails, and I mean, it was very exciting, and, and it was ex it really great. And then one day I went out, couldn't see anything because the whales were just out. They were just out, you know, because I think they're preparing for the big swim up north. And then um, the last day, um, as my friend describes it, was whale soup. I mean, the whole bay <laughs> was just jumping wow. with whales all over. And I thought, wow, they're really close to shore, which is rare, but they're everywhere. And I thought, well, maybe it was a rest day, you know. Um, and so my friend came back. I saw it for like an hour. It was just fabulous. And my friend came back and said, well, do you want to use the paddle board? She's like, no. And I thought, I only have two hours before I fly out of here. I'm going out on this paddle board. So I went out on this paddle board. And if you are really still, you can see, you know, there are these waves that look like, you know, they're black waves. But then if you look, you can see, I was looking and I could see the little whales kind of, I could see their fins swimming along. So I saw one and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to go. And like all the, all the boats, they have these kayaks that are looking for these whales. All of them are on one side. And my friends were like, oh, my God, why are you leaving? There's a whale. But I had seen this other whale, so I just started, like, paddling like crazy. <laughs> and, and then I was completely going the opposite direction of where everyone else was. And I was there by myself. And, and, and this whale was, I'm not joking, probably 20 feet or closer, came up, twisted, breached, and went down. And it uh, and I was literally like in a Godzilla movie where your mouth is open and you're stunned into inaction. <laughs> in awe, stunned. Wow. It was so stunningly beautiful, and I didn't fall off. Like you'd think, like wow, wouldn't that? But the whales are so graceful. It's like hardly a splash. You know, it's a splash, but hardly a splash. I don't even know how they can create so little splash, given that. It's like basically it's a, a humpback whale. It's about the size of a truck, you know, a delivery nice truck. Nice school bus. Yes, it's like up and down. And it's like, and and that day was magical. There were times when I was paddling and there'd be like a, a pod of four whales paddling. Us. We were like paddling with each other. There was a time when the whale was coming so fast at me. And I, I didn't even know what to do because you're not supposed to put your paddle in the, in the water because it disturbs him. But then you're not supposed to be closer than like you know I, I i don't remember like a football field away like it's one thing when you can't control because you're just you know so i, I was like just standing there and i it's, it's almost like seeing a whale coming towards you <laughs> like a bus and i was like <laughs> i just i just stayed there and i didn't know what to do and i thought i guess i'm going under but <laughs> this whale's gonna run me over and i'll just sit here because i'm not supposed to put my paddle in i'm not supposed to paddle closer I, but I want to go further, but I can't because I'd put my paddle in. So I just sat there like, I'm, I'm just going to hunker down <laughs> on the board. And it came by and like just came by me on the side and like, whew, you know, tail. Every, I mean, it was just so, it was the most magical, unbelievable, beautiful, graceful thing that I have, I, I, I may think ever have seen. It was so, so beautiful. And how does it relate to this show? I don't know. I think it's that um, there are these moments of grace that surround us all the time. Bingo. Yeah, and it's whether, I mean, really what I was doing is I was really tuning in and, like, really paying attention. And I, and I saw something that no one else saw, and I just followed the flow, and magic will be there. And I think it's there all the time. It's just about tuning in. Those are my final words. <laughs> I think those are perfect words to end on. <laughs>